Well, the honey harvest is over now and I wanna show you how I store my supers. I get questions from time to time as to how I store my honey supers. It is a controversial thing. People use different methods, uh, but I'm gonna show you what I do. It's worked well for me for years and have had no issues at all doing it this way. We were done extracting honey down there in Hartford at Rusty's place. We stuck the boxes on here vertically. I've never done it this way before, but Rusty recommended it to help keep rain out of the supers. I think it worked extremely well. I've left them sitting out now for a couple of weeks. The bees have cleaned them up really good. The uh, frames look pretty dry. Yeah, they, they got them cleaned up really good. So now it's time to store these things. Uh, let me show you my method here. This is kind of my beekeeping bay back here. I've got about a fourth of this section of the barn right now that I'm able to utilize for this. And uh, basically what we do is we just stack them in the back here. You can see we got about two and a half tall stacks right there. Um, and those are just boxes we didn't need this year. I put those in there yesterday. Now the product I use is these ice crystals. Same thing as Paramoth. You can get them at Walmart or you can order them on Amazon. The key is that you use the right product. You don't need to use moth balls. Moth balls will kill the bees. They're not good for the bees. Um, it's bad, but if you utilize this particular ingredient right here, the P-dichlorobenzene, uh, it works well. And this is a controversial thing. A lot of people think you should not store your honey supers with any type of chemical. Uh, what happens over time though is the, the ice crystals just kind of gas off, they evaporate and they disappear. And you can air your boxes out a little bit. Uh, by the time I pull these things down in the spring, it's like there's really no evidence of that stuff even still in there. I think it, it kills all the uh, moths and takes care of the initial problem. Occasionally I'll re-treat uh, them like sometime mid-fall or in the winter time, uh, but usually I don't have any issues. I have lost a few boxes to wax moths and I'll kind of show you how I prevent that from becoming a catastrophic thing here in a minute. Uh, but typically they do well, they store well, and I have very minimal loss due to wax moths. So let's open up this stack right here. These have been stored since last year. You can see the comb is still in good shape. Uh, we didn't even use them this year. And uh, we could have put them on this year with no trouble. It's good condition for that comb right there. These stacks are 16 boxes high. I could go a little higher and I may have to today uh, due to space. About every fourth box, I sprinkle a few of these ice crystals on there. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of retreat this one from last year. Just a few, that, actually that's the end of that bag. Just sprinkle them in there. Sometimes you get the ice crystals in there and little, they are actually crystals sometimes in those little balls, but this is the right thing. I don't know why they didn't crush them up, but it's okay. And then what I do, when I get up to eight, half a stack, so I put it every four, I'll put a few ice crystals in there. You have to have a stack, I'll put some sort of divider in there. You can use a, just another lid, or you can use a, some type of cardboard in here, and that kind of separates from the stack above. That way, if wax moths happen to get in there, they won't destroy the whole stack. You can put these dividers every four, or however often you want to, uh, but I just don't have enough dividers to go every four. So I usually go, you can see from last year, I put one there and one back there. And now what I'll do is I'll just finish that stack all the way up and I'll go ahead and put my ice crystals in every pour and uh, we'll have another stack done. So you can probably see back behind me here, I, I, we had a few deeps. So I just set them aside over here. We'll find a place for them later. Also a couple Apame boxes we'll put on the Apame stack over here. So I'm just gonna take these mediums right here and I stack them up and I'll show you how I do it. So you hear the, the bees did a really good job of cleaning out the, the frames. Uh, they've got them all cleaned up and ready to stack for next year. Now you do want to be careful that there are no real uh, openings or holes that the moths can get into. So something like this, I may take a uh, a little piece of plastic or a paper towel or something, kind of stuff it in there. I think that'll work fine. Okay, so I got four boxes stacked here. I'm gonna sprinkle a few of these 
And I'll show you better. I'll show you a little better when I get down lower. About every four boxes, I sprinkle just a few of those ice crystals on top. That's all I do. Okay, so I'm gonna take this top box up here. We're getting way on up here now. Set it up there. Take a few ice crystals. Sprinkle them in. Got to kind of make sure it's down between the frames so a little sit flush. Set a lid up here. Or some sort of a flat surface to keep the moss out. And that's a complete stack right there. So, so that's how we're doing it. I try to get them all stacked up and see if I can figure out how to fit them all in here. One more thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna scoop up these cappings right here and put them in this bucket like this. And I'll process this wax. These cappings are from the, where the bees cleaned up the supers. It's so hot today, it's gonna melt. This wax is gonna melt pretty quickly probably, so. I'll just try to stay on top of it the best I can here. Just working through the process. We got four boxes so far on this new stack here, so use the ice crystals and just sprinkle a few on here so they kind of fall down in there. And that's it. Now, from what I understand, the, the weight of the fumes drops down through the boxes. I assume that's true because it, it's worked for me for years doing it this way. Uh, but I'm gonna stack four more boxes up, put some more ice crystals, the divider, and then go on up to 16. Whew, well, I've been working at it for a while. The trailer is cleaned off. And here's the results back here. All those stacks back there. So they should be stored through next spring. Here's what I did on some of these that had openings in the boxes to seal them off a little bit. Anyway, it's hot. Boy, is it hot. And I've had enough. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna put a link for the uh, honey harvest video we did a couple of weeks ago, right here. Y'all take care and we'll catch you on the next one.